So as I've said, we have almost no direct access into the mechanics of our attractions. Instead, visual information plugs into ancient neural modules that drive our behavior. Recall that experiment that I just mentioned when men ranked the beauty of women's faces, they found the women with dilated eyes more attractive because dilated eyes signal sexual interest, but the men had no conscious access to their decision-making process. Now, I'll give you another piece of data, which is sort of mind-blowing and demonstrates how deeply and unconsciously we pick up on signals. First, consider this strange fact that human females are unique among primates in that they participate in mating year-round. They don't broadcast any special signal to publicize when they are fertile. And this is totally different from other primates who have these periodic cycles of being in heat. All other female mammals give off clear signals when they're in heat. For example, in female baboons, the rear end turns bright pink, which is an unmistakable and irresistible invitation for a male baboon. Human females just don't give off signals like this. Or don't they? It turns out that a woman is considered to be most beautiful just at the peak of fertility in her menstrual cycle, about 10 days before menses. This is true whether she's judged by men or by women, and it's not a matter of how she acts. It's perceived this way even if people are just looking at her photograph. So her good looks broadcast her level of fertility. Her signals are more subtle than the baboons, but they only need to be clear enough to tickle the dedicated unconscious machinery of the males in the room. If the signals can reach those circuits, the mission is accomplished. The signals also reach the circuitry of other females. Women are quite sensitive to the effect of other women's cycles, perhaps because this lets them assess their competitors when competing for mates. It's not yet clear what the tip-offs for fertility are. They may include some qualities of the skin or the fact that a woman's ears and breasts become more symmetrical in the days leading up to ovulation. Whatever the constellation of clues are, our brains are engineered to latch on even while the conscious mind has no access. Your mind simply senses the almighty and inexplicable tug of desire. The effects of ovulation and beauty are not just assessed in the laboratory, they are measurable in real-life situations. Some years ago, I'm not making this up, there was a study by scientists who counted up the tips made by exotic dancers at the local strip clubs and correlated this with the menstrual cycles of the dancers. And what they found is that during peak fertility, dancers raked in an average of $68 an hour. When they were menstruating, they earned only about $35, and in between, they averaged about $52. So although these women were presumably acting flirtatiously throughout the month, their change in fertility was broadcast to hopeful customers by changes in body odor, skin, waist-to-hip ratio, and possibly their own confidence as well. Now, interestingly, dancers on birth control didn't show any clear peak in performance and earned only a monthly average of $37 per hour versus an average of $53 per hour for dancers not on birth control. Presumably, they earned less because the pill leads to hormonal changes and cues indicative of early pregnancy. And so the dancers were presumably slightly less magnetic to the customers in the club. All this research drives home the point that the pulls we feel are built deeply into our neural machinery. We don't have conscious access to the programs and can only surface these issues with careful studies. And the part that's always amazed me is how subtle these signals are. The brain is picking up on these really small signals. So think again about that really attractive person you know. And imagine that you measured the distance between his or her eyes and nose length and lip thickness and chin shape and so on, if you compared those measurements to those of a not-so-attractive person you know, you would find that the differences are really subtle, like a centimeter here, a centimeter there, but it makes a big difference in your final judgment. <laughs> 